ブランドスポンサーの提供でお送りします Hey guys, k a k a r o t 197 again. This time with a review of the 144th scale high grade Universal Century Rigazi from the Shark's Counter Attack movie. And this model kit has been provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hobby Link Japan. In terms of looks, Bandai did a great job. Everything looks nice and sharp with a good amount of surface detail for a high grade. Seam lines are also well hidden in general, but when you look at it from above, you can still spot a few. In terms of color accuracy, they pretty much nailed it. We get the usual eye sticker and a metallic green one for the front and back camera. Then, for the back weapon system, we get two dark blue stickers on each wing that are surprisingly decent. And with that, the only painting left to do is yellow for the insides of the thrusters. Admittedly, getting this one as a part would have been nice, but overall, we are getting a very good looking and extremely color accurate Rigazi straight out of the box. Although, one thing that I am still missing is a sheet of clear marking stickers for the markings that we actually saw in the movie. But let's quickly forget about that and move on to the accessories. Starting off with the weapons that are already on the machine. On the head, we get two 60mm Vulcan guns. According to some pictures, these are grey, but according to others, they're the same color as the head. So take your pick. Then on the arms, we get a double grenade launcher with a really cool sliding gimmick to reveal the grenades. You will have to paint these red, by the way. Also, these are non removable, just as the grenades we get on the hip. But these you will not have to paint. Then on the backpack, two beam sabers are stored. It's really cool that there's an opening hatch gimmick to reveal the unusable stored mode beam sabers, but it is only held on with friction and a little bit loose. Fortunately, when it is closed, it is solidly shut. Of course, we also get two usable beam sabers with two clear yellow beam saber blades. And rather than the usual circular connection, these have a rectangular one. So make sure you don't break these because you might not have a replacement for them. Also, when you just slide these beam sabers into the hand, you might think that they're quite loose, but they kind of lock into place, allowing them to pull off some great poses. We also get the usual beam rifle with the usual simple construction. Two halves slapped together and a gun barrel. This means a seam line running right through the middle and a non removable E pack. On the positive side, the handle has a peg that fits extremely securely into the angled trigger finger hand. And especially for the Rigazi with its pretty bulky arms, this was very necessary. And what also goes really well together with the gun is the open left hand. Be advised, we do not get a right one. Up next is a shield, which also has three hand grenades, which are unremovable. To mount it, you simply attach this bracket to either arm and then slide the shield onto the side or onto the back. And finally, we get to the biggest accessory of this kit the back weapon system, or BWS. Or why did Anaheim Electronics ever think this was a good idea? Regardless, let's transform this thing. And now it's a really cool space fighter with two beam cannons, a mega beam cannon, and two extra fuel tanks. It's just a shame that it will be ditched as soon as an enemy mobile suit comes anywhere near it, and the Rig Z can never transform back because it literally just yeets the backpack into space. Gee, I wonder why this design wasn't accepted. Anyways, to attach our budget wave rider, we get a hole at the bottom to attach it to an action base. And if we look underneath the skirt armor, we will find the same action base connection point. Also, if you'd want to, you could use the back weapon system as a shield. But that's enough about that thing. Let's have a look at the articulation instead. Things start off really well with an amazing hinge and ball joint combo on the head. And to prevent the antennas from being accidentally snapped off, they're made of a softer plastic. 
The shoulder movement is also very interesting. They go forwards and backwards and up and down, but to prevent them from falling down, there's a small click that you have to get over. Then the arms themselves will also go up really far, rotate around below the shoulder, bend at the elbow on only one single joint, and the hands are on the usual ball joints. The waist will rotate around on a simple peg, but if you extend it, you can get a bit of forwards and backwards movement. Then on the back, we get a movable tail fin. The front skirts are surprisingly individually molded and go forwards enough for the legs. Backwards movement is hindered by the static back skirt though. The outdoors movement is pretty nice for a ball jointed hip, and we also get some nice rotation. The knees are very well double jointed, and we even have a moving knee piece for some extra pizzazz. This piece also moves, but the feet are rather limited. They're on a single ball joint and only go a bit forwards and backwards, side to side, and rotate around a bit. So overall, while the articulation could have been a bit better, it's still good enough for some cool poses. And especially the upwards movement of the head can get you some really dynamic ones. That then brings us to the inevitable question, do you want to buy this? And this is one of those model kits where if you like the mobile suit, sure. It's a really good and very accurate representation of the Rigazi. But for everyone else, there's simply better fish in the sea. Again, there's nothing really wrong with this kit, but at a retail price of 2,800 yen, there's also nothing that jumps out as amazing about this kit. Simply put, there are better deals out there. For example, here he is next to the old Zeta Gundam from the Griffios War set and the Zeta Plus. Ironically enough, the Rigazi's back weapon system that made it cheaper than its transformable cousins in universe actually made it more expensive than them in real life. And then here he is next to some other big boys that you can buy for under 2,800 yen, the Dobin Wolf and the Byerland Custom, and I think you can see my point. But moving along with some more size comparisons, here he is next to the other Federation forces from Shars Counterattack, the Jagan that came with clear marking stickers, and the new Gundam, that also came with clear marking stickers. And then finally, here he is next to the standard size Jim Custom, and the always bulky Zaku 3. And as you can see, the Rigazi is a pretty tall machine, but not quite as tall as the Zaku 3, if you discount the tail fin. And talking about discounts, this thing is currently on sale at Hobby Link Japan, so now might be the perfect time to pick one up. Because at normal retail price, the Jim Custom and Zaku 3 combined are the exact same price as a single Rigazi. So that's all for this review, brought to you by Hobby Link Japan. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope all of you watching have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.